Hi guys, welcome to Drumdog, and today we are talking about aligning snare wires. Now it's safe to say that the snare drum is one of the most important parts of the kit, and therefore it's one of the most important parts that we get it sounding right. Now, although it doesn't sound like the most exciting topic in the world, snare wire alignment can make a massive difference to our snare sound, and if not done right, can make some nasty, sympathetic buzzes and resonance after each hit. So today, we're gonna to be running through how to align your wires accurately so we can get your snares sounding as best as possible. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just flip your snare drum over so you've got good access to the wire side. Now, before you do anything, it's worth checking to see if your wires are aligned already. They might not want touching. So all you gotta do is turn on your throw off and you're visually checking the gap between the end plates of the wires and the bearing edge. Not only are you checking that on both ends, you're also checking it on each side of that end plate, making sure the wires aren't twisted. Now, although these wires are actually aligned okay, today we're gonna to be undoing them just to go through the process of aligning them back up again. So all I'm gonna to do to undo these is grab my drum key and undo these clamping plates from each end. Now, it doesn't matter which end you start on first. Here, I'm starting on my throw-off end. Now, make sure you have got the throw-off off for this so we're not pinging anything as they come loose. You may find if they've been sat a while, you might have just to pull them free as they might have kind of half welded themselves to those little clamping plates there. So once we've got those ribbons free, both ends, now is actually a really good time to just double check the condition of your ribbons on your wires. Give them a little visual inspection and you're just looking for any points that have rubbed thin or any splits in them. Now these look okay, it's normal to see little bends like this where the clamps have been holding them as long as there are no, as long as there are no splits or cracks or anything. Now these are looking all right, so let's get them aligned. Now before you actually fit these ribbons back in, we need to go through a process of setting our throw off to the middle of its adjustment range. Now we're doing this so once we've got our wires aligned and done back up, we wanna have the option to either increase or decrease that tension depending on where we want the sound to be. If our throw off is already set too far in one direction and then we align it there, we might not be able to increase the tension any further if we need to. So to do this, all we're gonna do is first of all, wind our throw off all the way in. Wind it all the way up until we hit a stop, which for this throw off is right there and feel that tighten up now so that is as far tight as this will go now i want to find how far loose it can go to get an idea of how big that adjustment range is now when you do loosen it off get ready to catch it because the last thing you want is this falling apart and then be picking bits of throw off off the floor and then trying to work out how it all went together again so i've got this other hand underneath it just ready for when it pops off the end of the thread and that's loose there so you can see it's ready to pop out now so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split the difference between all the way up and all the way undone and I'm going to wind this in to its halfway point. So that looks about halfway and that should give me enough adjustment in each direction once we've got the wires on. Right so here we go. Let's pop these ribbons back through the holes in the bottom hoop and then fish them back into their clamps. Now this can be a little bit finicky to get them through their clamps, especially on the throw-off side, as for this throw-off, it's pointing in a different direction. So here comes the slightly tricky bit. What we want to do now is actually align these wires straight before we do anything up. So in order to do that, I'm going to pull them as tight as I can with each ribbon and I'm going to visually align these wires. Now you can see that if I pull on one side, I can pull the wires to one side. If I pull the other way and slide them across that head to get them nice and centralised. Now take your time, give them a pull about, make sure your tension is equal, make sure your ribbons are centred in the clamps. 
to make sure they're not twisted to one way. Then once you're happy that it's nice and central, just take a finger, still holding the wires under tension, and just push down on that plate to clamp the butt end down. Now once we've got it clamped, I'm going to let go of those ribbons and then just nip up that clamp. So really, that's the hard bit done. If you've managed to get that right first time, then your wires should be aligned. But this may take a couple of attempts to get this right because it's not, it's not super easy to get them dead square. So now over to the throw off side and what I'm going to do here with the throw off in the off position, I'm going to pull that ribbon tight, make sure the alignment still looks good and I'm going to give it just a little bit of slack, still making sure the ribbon's in the middle of the clamp and then I'm going to clamp that one up. So now comes the moment of truth. Let's see how well we've aligned these wires by turning on that throw off. Now I can feel straight away that there's too much tension in those wires. This is why we centered that adjustment on the throw off. So the first thing I'm going to do is just wind that throw off until the tension on those wires doesn't feel like I'm stretching them as I do up that throw off. So just a little more there. And there we go. Okay, so that's tension on the wires and that actually looks okay. I'm quite happy with that. Now don't be afraid that if it does look too far one way, don't be afraid to just undo those clamps and just start that centering process again. It's worth getting this right because just having them a little bit off center can actually have fairly big differences in sound. Now, although that was relatively easy, some of you at home may already be looking at your own snares and thinking, well, hang on, mine doesn't look like that because these ribbons on each end are not the only way to secure wires. There's another option where we have string which holds each end of the end plates. Now these can be a little bit more difficult to align, so let's check it out. Okay, so here's our snare with our string ended wires. Now these can be a little bit more tricky to align, but the same process applies. The only difference here is that these are a lot easier to get twisted. Let's find out why. Now first things first, I'm going to turn that strainer off and go through the same process. I'm just going to loosen off these at both ends so we're free to move these wires. Now there we go, our string is nice and loose there on both ends. And then just as we did before, I'm going to take a second to center this throw off adjustment to make sure that when we're done, we've got enough adjustment in both directions. So first things first, we're doing it all the way up. It seems to be a really long way on this throw off. Okay, so there's our bottom, he's all the way up there. And then we want to wind him all the way back and work out the limit of our adjustment to then set in the middle. Okay, so here's our difference with the string ended wires. Now, as you'll see here, it's quite easy as I pull these wires tight and start to align them, that if I don't apply really even pressure to both ends of the string, each end, it's very easy to accidentally twist these wires and have more tension on one side of the wires than the other side. Now what this is going to create is a lot of tension for these strands, but then a very low tension to the strands at the other end, which are then going to make our sympathetic buzzes and those nasty resonances that we want to cut out. So to make it a little easier to align these accurately, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our string around the little screws that go through our locking plates. So then we've got all four ends of the string up in the air, which is at the bottom of the drum. And then by pulling them individually, we can fidget our wires into position with a little bit more control over each end. Now this process really is a bit more fiddly with these string ends, so take your time. Make sure that not only your snares look centered to the drum, but each end is perfectly square with the bearing edge with even tension on all four ends. So once that's looking nice and square, as before, I'm just going to push in on that end plate to lock our position on the butt end and then do it up. OK, 
Okay, so that's our butt end locked off. As I pull these tight again, let's double check our alignment. Okay, it's looking okay. So let's give that enough slack to work with. And then lock this side off too. Now, as before, being careful for feeling how much tension we're applying, let's apply that throw off and see how well aligned we are. Now, these guys are looking okay, but do be strict with yourself. Just really double check those gaps between the end plates and the bearing edge on both sides on each end, okay? Now, although it might not seem like the most exciting process in the world in terms of drums, aligning your snare wires has a massive effect on the sound of our drums, and I think it's safe to say that we all enjoy playing that little bit more when our drums sound like we feel they should. Now, if you're still having any problems with the sound of your snare drum, then check out our old video here where we go through another five reasons that your snare drum might be having some tuning issues. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again soon.